of the V. Okay, so we can do, again, uh, we could do um, square root of uh, 2 squared plus 3 squared. That's square root of uh, 4 plus 9, right? And then the magnitude of the V is um, 10 to the fourth, right? Now we got to figure out sine of the angle, okay? So what is the angle here? Let's go back here. What is this angle here? Theta. Well, we have to figure it out, right? Then we have to take its sine. Okay, so to figure out the angle between any two vectors, we can use the uh, dot product. Right? Cosine theta is V dot B over magnitude V, magnitude B. So um, that's going to be negative 2 times 5, negative 10, plus 3 times negative 2, which is uh, negative 6. Divided by the magnitude of V, which is square root of 4 plus 9, square root of magnitude of B, 25 plus... Four. Now notice when I did this, I didn't care about the power, the the ma the power of the B field and the uh, the velocity. Ten to the fourth, ten to the minus two. Because there's up here, there's a ten to the fourth, ten to the minus two. This one is ten to the fourth. This is ten to the minus two. So the powers cancel. You know, so all that matters is just this. So the angle theta is. Uh, that one, it's going to be a uh, obtuse angle greater than 90. One forty five point five degrees. Okay, one hundred and forty five. So what it's giving me is it's giving me this angle, theta, which is correct. It's greater than uh, v is that way, b is that way. So it's greater than ninety. Now when I take the sine of that, I could either take the sine of that or the sine of its supplementary. The sine doesn't care if it's uh, obtuse or acute, right? So I could take the sine of uh, What's its supplementary? 34.5. So go back here now. Take sine of, I could take sine of 145.5, or I could take sine of uh, 34.5. Okay, so now put that all in to the calculator. Tell me what you get, the radius of the orbit. And then we'll do the last part. It's going to be in, of the order of a millimeter, I think, something like that. It's going to be pretty...
Okay, so 0.72 millimeter. I could tell it was going to be of a similar or of the order of a millimeter. So it's it's going to be very small. As a matter of fact, when I did the uh, when I did the the ion the charge, you could see that the the radius was very small over there as well. It was going to go around, come around, come around, come around. It's like very very small. So it's similar to that. Even uh, uh, that one is very very small, less than a millimeter. Okay, now where is the center of its helical path going to be? So what, what we're going to have to do is calculate its parallel component, right? But uh, the parallel component is not affected. So V parallel is V cosine theta. So V is equal to square root of, again, uh, the 4 plus 9. times 10 to the fourth times cosine of 140 uh, or at least let's see 145.5 or I could do cos that one is going to give me a negative but I just want to know the absolute value of this so I could take uh, just cosine of uh, 34.5 because what I'm interested in is in the magnitude of that point two point seven. Oh, nine seven. Okay. So the parallel component is not affected by the magnetic field. Okay. So what's the next thing I need to do? Uh, the the problem gave me the time, right? Uh, what is the center of its helical path in four milliseconds? So we know that it, uh, it's that this part is not going to be affected, and we know the time. Therefore, we know the distance from here to here. Let's say it's going to end up at the point x y. Right? We know it's going to end up at the point x y. So the distance it's going to travel from here to here. Distance is uh, v parallel times t. Right? And the distance, we could use the distance formula, x, y, and then this point is 1, 5. So the distance formula is square root of x minus 1 squared plus uh, y minus 5 squared, v parallel times t, so 2.94 times 10 to the fourth times 4 times 10 to the minus 3. It was 4 milliseconds, right? So that's going to be, uh, this is going to be, oh, I, and then I can square both sides. And then 10 to the 4 times uh, 10 to the minus 3 is uh, 10, right? So that's 40. And I, I square that. So 2.94, and then 10 to the 4, 10 to the minus 3, that's 10. 10 times 4, 40, 40 quantity squared. So uh, that tells me that the distance th that it's going to travel is equal to v parallel times t. So that gives me uh, one equation, x and y. But that's still not enough to solve for x and y, right?